Foreign Secretary Lord Cameron has announced that the US, UK and partners will open a maritime corridor to deliver aid directly to Gaza. But he said that he would continue to urge Israel to allow more trucks into Gaza as the fastest way to get aid to those who need it. His full tweet says people in Gaza are in desperate humanitarian need. Alongside the US, the UK and partners, have, we have announced we will open a maritime corridor to deliver aid directly to Gaza. He goes on to say we continue to urge Israel to allow more trucks into Gaza as the fastest way to get aid to those who need it. This comes as the EU commissioning chief Ursula von der Leyen is set to make a statement this hour and she is visiting Cyprus for the launch of that humanitarian sea corridor. Now this was all announced as part of President Biden's State of the Union address last night. He confirmed that he has ordered the UK military to build a temporary pier off the coast of Gaza. Now, he said it would ensure a massive increase in aid for Palestinians. Now, that aid is likely to go through Cyprus. So the details we still don't have in full, but we are expecting some sort of port to be built into Gaza and that will be fed into Gaza from Cyprus. So that is what we are looking at at the moment. But we have had confirmation that the UK is going to be part of that operation that President Biden announced. Also, that we expect the EU to be part of that because the EU's Ursula von der Leyen is visiting Cyprus a little bit later to talk about that humanitarian corridor that we expect to go from Cyprus. It will then go to this port that the US are building off Gaza. Now, in his State of the Union speech overnight, President Biden, as I said, confirmed that he had ordered the US military to build that temporary pier off the coast of Gaza. He said it would ensure a massive increase in aid for Palestinians. He warned Israel that humanitarian assistance should never be used as a bargaining chip. Now, let's listen in to Ursula von der Leyen, who we are uh, expecting to speak very shortly in Cyprus. Um, this is, at the moment, uh, the Cypriot um, uh, uh, ministers there who are just building up to Ursula von der Leyen, uh, who is going to speak at this event in Cyprus. Um, it is all part, as you can see, the Cyprus Maritime Corridor behind there. So what is happening is it was announced by Mr Biden that the US was going to build a temporary pier off the coast of Gaza. We've then, in the last hour, had that tweet from the British Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, saying that the UK is going to be one of those partners that's going to build that maritime corridor. And now we are seeing, as part of this coordinated effort, very shortly, Ursula von der Leyen is going to speak in Cyprus. But first, let's have a listen to what President Biden said about building that pier in his State of the Union address last night. Protecting and saving innocent lives has to be a priority. As we look to the future, the only real solution to the situation is a two-state solution over time. <clears throat> and I say this, as a lifelong supporter of Israel, my entire career, no one has a stronger record with Israel than I do. I challenge any of you here. I'm the only American president to visit Israel in wartime. But there is no other path that guarantees Israel's security and democracy. There is no other path that guarantees that Palestinians can live in peace with, with peace and dignity. So let us take you back to the scene live in Cyprus, where we are expecting the EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen to speak very shortly. As you can see, it's all part of this concerted effort to bring humanitarian aid in to Gaza via the sea. Let us listen in to what the Cypriots are saying at the moment. Ursula, Madam President, you were, and I remember this very well, you were a staunch vocal supporter of the Cyprus Maritime Corridor from the very beginning. Thank you for your vision and your leadership. Cyprus is deeply appreciative of the full support by you personally, by the European Commission, as well as that of the United Arab Emirates, the United States, 
and other partners with whom we have been in intense consultations in the last weeks and months. At the same time, the UN Special Coordinator and her important mandate to coordinate, increase, and standardize the humanitarian assistance going into Gaza are also important elements in making the corridor a sustained, long-term maritime lifeline for the civilians in Gaza. Today, we stand united by a common vision to alleviate the humanitarian tragedy of the civilians in Gaza here at the Joint Rescue Coordination Center, which constitutes an integral facility of the critical infrastructures in the Amalthea plan. The other critical facility in the Amalthea capsule is Cyclops, the Center for Land, Open Seas, and Port Security, established in close cooperation with the United States. Here, at the JRCC, where we also monitor all sea traffic going in and out of Cyprus. As we have discussed, the number of migrants from Syria and Lebanon have been consistently increasing in recent months, which is deeply concerning for, for Cyprus. I look forward to working with you also on this Ursula, and just as we are doing today, to do so in a result-oriented manner. With the President, I also discussed this morning our efforts to resume negotiations on the Cyprus problem in line with the relevant UN Security Council resolutions and the European Union law, values and principles. A solution to the Cyprus problem will have a resounding regional impact as well. We agree that the European Union can be a driver for developments on the Cyprus question and in this regard, we exchange views on the state of play in EU-Turkey relations in which the Cyprus question is, of course, a core component part. Dear Ursula, once again, it is a great pleasure to host you and your team to Cyprus in order to deliver the implementation of the Amalthe Initiative of the Maritime Corridor for the delivery of aid in Gaza. Our journey only just begins. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Dear Nikos, thank you very much for welcoming me and my team here to Lanaka and in particular to the Joint Rescue Coordination Center. We are here because Palestinians and in particular those in Gaza um, need all our help. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is dire with innocent Palestinian families and children desperate for basic needs. And today we are facing a humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. And we stand by the innocent civilians in Palestine. And this is why Europe is financing a major humanitarian aid effort for Palestinians in Gaza and in the region. 250 million euros this year alone but the key challenge is to get the aid to the people on the ground in Gaza. And we know the difficulties faced at the land borders in Gaza, be it through the Rafah border crossing or through the Jordan Road corridor. And that is why today the Republic of Cyprus, the European Commission, the United Arab Emirates and the United States of course supported by other critical partners, announced our intent to open the Maritime Corridor to deliver much needed additional amounts of humanitarian assistance by sea. Together our nations intend to build on this model to deliver significant additional aid by sea. So I am extremely grateful to you, Mr. President, dear Nikos, and to the people of Cyprus for your leadership in establishing the Amalthea Initiative. It was impressive to see and to visit the different sites, how it um, is evolving, supplementing the efforts to deliver significant additional aid. We are launching this Cyprus Maritime Corridor together. Cyprus, the European Union, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States. And it is your relentless work to get this corridor up and running, 
Despite all the challenges, and this is truly inspiring, we are now very close to the opening of the corridor, hopefully this Saturday, this Sunday, and I'm very glad to see that an initial pilot operation will be launched today. Thus, um, it is the partnership that started it today with the World Central Kitchen, whom I want to thank wholeheartedly for their tireless and so important work. Mr. President, in Ecos, Cyprus has always been a bridge between Europe and the Middle East. And thanks to the Amalthea Initiative, it is proving this historical role once again today. I welcome the leadership of President Nikos Christodoulides by serving as a mediator for all parties involved. And I would like to commend the particular effort of the President of the United Arab Emirates, Mohammed bin Zayed, to mobilize support to activate this corridor by securing the first of many shipments of goods to the people of North Gaza. And I call on all the actors who have a role to play here to help this corridor deliver on its potential. One thing is for sure, you can count on us. The Maritime Corridor can make a real differ difference in the plight of the Palestinian people. But in parallel, our efforts to provide assistance to Palestinians through all possible routes, of course, will continue. As part of our EU humanitarian air bridge operation, we have launched 41 flights carrying over 1,800 tons of aid, and we will consider all other options, including airdrops, if our humanitarian partners on the ground consider this effective. But our action does not stop there. We must also focus our attention, our efforts and outreach on preventing an ignition of violence across the whole region. <clears throat> I am in regular contact with President al-Sisi of Egypt and King Abdullah of Jordan. The situation in the Red Sea is particularly concerning with maritime security deteriorating day after day and critical infrastructure damaged due to the repeated Houthi attacks. This is why we have launched the EU Naval Force Operation Aspidas, and I know that Cyprus has deployed two naval officers for this mission, and we really thank you for that, Mr. President. With Aspidas, Europe is acting to ensure freedom of navigation in the Red Sea, working alongside with our international partners. Finally, a word on the day after. We agree that we must start preparing today with a viable perspective. And this perspective continues to lie in the two-state solution. This requires an immediate humanitarian pause that would lead to a sustainable ceasefire. It is clear that there can be no forced displacement of Palestinians and no blockade of Gaza. But it is equally clear that Gaza cannot be a safe haven for terrorists and that we will keep on calling for the immediate unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas. Europe will continue to help build momentum for this political horizon. So thank you again, Mr. President Dianikos. And I want to thank everyone working here at the JRCC. You will play a central role in the Amalthea Initiative. You are already playing an important and central role overall in the region here. So something comes on top of your responsibility. You embody Europe's solidarity at its best. And I know that the people of Cyprus themselves know what suffering and loss can feel like. And therefore, we in the European Union stand by you, Mr. President, in your efforts to resume the peace talks for the solution of the Cyprus question. Here, too, you can count on us. Many thanks.
difficult so to that say. is the eu commission president and the president of cyprus in larnaca at the launch of what is a humanitarian aid corridor from cyprus into Gaza. Now, the EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen at the launch of that sea corridor said that they hoped it would be open this Sunday. She said that Palestinians need all our help, uh, the humanitarian situation is dire, and that people are desperate for basic needs. She said they were facing a humanitarian catastrophe, and she said the key aim was to get aid in, and she outlined the difficulties that we know that has been happening by road, and that is why they they have turned to Cyprus, the UK, the UAE and the US and others to bring humanitarian aid in by sea. She said it would see significant amounts of aid being brought in. As I said, she said that they hope to open that this Sunday, although a pilot operation will start today. As you heard, she thanked the president of Cyprus and also the president of the United Arab Emirates for helping to get this maritime corridor up and running. She called on everyone to help deliver it, saying that it can make a real difference for Palestinians. At the end, she also again called for that humanitarian pause in the fighting and eventually a ceasefire. She also again reiterated the call for all the hostages being held to be released. The president of Cyprus, who you saw there, said that they were united in the common vision of bringing aid into Gaza. He added that oh, our journey was only just beginning. Let's go straight to Yolan Nell, who is our Middle East correspondent in Jerusalem. So, Yolan, it is all coming together. We had President Biden talking about this port. We then had Lord Cameron, the British Foreign Secretary, saying the UK would be involved. And now we've got the full details from the EU Commission President and the President of Cyprus. That's right. And actually, it's a couple of months ago that we really started hearing a lot more from Cyprus about this proposed uh, sea route to bring in aid to Gaza. And Britain has shown a lot of interest in that, uh, Lord Cameron in particular, uh, prior to this announcement by the US. What's really new now is the time frame that's being uh, brought on this um, new kind of emphasis on the project as a way of hurrying aid uh, into Gaza. And it comes after Lord Cameron, the, the foreign secretary, uh, had said that really Israel allies were losing patience. There have been calls now for, for some weeks for an increase in the flow of aid. We've got the UN warning of mass starvation in Gaza. So this looks like a plan now that could be in place potentially for the start of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. And as the, uh, are the Israelis, as far as we know, going to cooperate with this in Cyprus? And what role will they have in checking all of that aid? Well, the idea, as we understand it, is that there would be a screening process that could take place uh, in Cyprus um, with Israel overseeing that. And actually, um, we already had a couple of months ago um, one of the Israeli ministers in Cyprus looking at a test of a, a screening process there. Uh, but then we didn't hear too much more about it. So the idea seems to be that this is coordinated uh, with the Israelis. Um, and then the aid is brought in once it's been screened uh, into Gaza, there isn't a deep sea port in Gaza. So what we're looking at here is the construction of some kind of temporary pier. Now, it's not been made clear um, the logistics of that or how aid will be stored in Gaza, how it will be distributed afterwards. Um, it seems perhaps private contractors, uh, the UN might be involved, uh, but a lot more details still to come on this. Um, but what is clear is there's a lot of coordination, uh, a lot of enthusiasm uh, for this de deal. It looks like some kind of concrete step uh, for all these different players in the region, in Europe, in the US, uh, something they've been looking for to try to uh, have a, a positive announcement, really, especially after we've had in, in past days um, the failure of truce talks uh, in Cairo through Egyptian mediators with a Hamas delegation to achieve some kind of breakthrough to have a truce deal which would allow um, in Ramadan, as had been hoped, a, a big surge in aid going into Gaza uh, in exchange for Israeli hostages coming out and also uh, Palestinian prisoners being freed from Israeli jails. Those talks will still continue, but this is another initiative that can be taken in parallel. Yolan Nell in Jerusalem, thank you very much. I know you'll go off to try and get more details of how this corridor will work.